What's going on guys, CNR Talks here, back on that vlog grind. Um, so today we're going to be talking about the kind of intimate cultural power of YouTube. Um, now this is something that's definitely grown over time, uh, we'll get into it. Um, but just to start off, I want to share a quote uh, from a reading. Um, this quote is that, separated by distance, people sharing media can feel closer by experiencing similar forms of mediated humor. Um, this is from a book called Kids on YouTube, and... Um, basically what this is saying is that like if you see a video and then share it with some friend who lives in another state or maybe is away at school or something, um, it can make these pe two people feel a lot closer. Um, I think this is a very genuine um, piece of information about YouTube. I think we've all done this and I think it all has definitely fostered um, a connection between you and that other person. Um, I think this is a very important part of YouTube because this is definitely a significant part of what people use it for. Um, uh, what do you What do you guys think are the limits of the intimacy um, of YouTube, though? Because at the end of the day, it is just um, a video that probably you and your friend are not in. So I just want to ask you guys, what do you think is the limit of that um, connection? Um, Another thing we're going to talk about is that the trends of YouTube channels. So um, I'm sure if you guys are on YouTube, you've seen a lot of YouTube channels. Um, so generally, YouTubers start out and they post a wide range of content. Um, but then it's actually been seen that in every single channel, there's been a form of specializ specialization that's been going on. Um, so what this means is that if a YouTuber maybe posts vlogs and then like a Let's Play and then a haul, um, that YouTuber is going to narrow down on one piece of content and post like 75 to 90 percent just that content. Um, yeah, there's a lot of like I'm sure I've, I know a lot of channels that have multiple things, but all those channels have one piece that's a majority of it, and um, this is kind of part of who that person is, and it shows their preferences, what they enjoy doing, um, what they enjoy watching, also possibly as well. And I think that's an important takeaway. Um, from YouTube. Um, kind of going off that onto the cultural aspect of YouTube. So YouTube has kind of almost accidentally, well I have a quote here, um, YouTube is thus evolving into a massive heterogeneous but for the most part accidental and disordered public archive. Um, so this is kind of talking about the culture that is on YouTube um, by people posting so many different things, it's kind of accidentally creating this huge archive of culture. Like, for example, if um, someone posts a, I don't know, like a, a particular song from their heritage or their culture, um, something that they do on a regular basis, and then another person posts, like, a particular food, like, say you're Hispanic, so you post, like, um, how to make this type of Mexican food, um, that can come together over like thousands and thousands of uploads to create this huge cultural archive spanning anything from like, like I said, food, um, it could be art, it could be anything. Um, so this is something that's become like more noticeable as more and more content has come up and more and more um, scholarly trusted resources have appeared on YouTube because um, there's a lot of more antiquated sources for this kind of culture that maybe are not as popular as they used to. Like there are definitely a ton of museums out there, but um, I think for certain age groups of people in the United States, they're spending a ton more time on YouTube than ever going to a museum. Like, I've been to a few museums, but I've easily spent way more time on YouTube than any museum. And um, I think that shows, like, the power YouTube has over the cultural dispersion of um, many different people's cultures. Um, so I have another question about that. Um, do you guys think that... YouTube could actually eventually replace like some older antiquated forms of um, sharing culture, like for example, maybe a maybe an art museum, um, because it definitely be it wouldn't be certainly not the same effect as going to the art museum, but it'd be a lot easier to sit in your chair and watch a YouTube video about every piece of painting, every painting, excuse me, um, in that museum rather than drive to the museum, pay to get in, um, and then walk around the whole thing. Now. There's definitely um, a market for that in museums. Like, um, plenty of people enjoy doing that. But I just want to ask you guys: Do you think it's possible with the progression, the increased technology in our lives? Um, do you think it's possible that eventually that's what museums are going to be? Um, 
So I think that's about it for today. Um, thanks for tuning in. Uh, like and subscribe if you like the content. And if you guys want to share uh, anything about your feelings on the culture of YouTube or um, how the, the kind of public um, collection of different cultures has spread on YouTube, maybe your experience with that, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.